Hey, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Renf, and that was Josh Cook on the piano. And I just noticed my shadow in the brick. So I can raise up my hand. You can high-five my shadow if you wanted to. Oh! Anyways, <laughs> that, that was dumb. Let's move on. No, that's okay. Uh, okay, so we got, a lot of, we got a lot of show. We got Lisa and we got Irene, and they're here to talk about the... Uh, they're they're uh, promoting their events for the, uh, interna the uh, Women's International Theater Festival, which is going on this weekend at the Elks and at the Roxy. They'll talk more about this after we talk more about the, uh, some news, some weather, some <laughs> Hallmark or Bullmark, some events, some city council, because the city council report is going to be pretty big because it, it may impact your future of how you see downtown Missoula and how we grow in affordable housing in the city of Missoula. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We got uh, the finale of Flagship Friday. So we got a lot of last things because it's my last week uh, for a couple weeks as Josh will be taking over for uh, the morning show. He's going to have a little help from Neil. Yeah, it'll be good maybe. Tune in. Cool. So Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We'll keep doing the show well into the season. So let's throw it to a little bit of weather. Currently 48 degrees, but you're looking for all those showers happening today, tonight, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday. In a lot of partly cloudy, maybe some chance of thunderstorms happening Memorial Day because things are warming up. And, and as more overcast and hotter it gets, the more chances for thunderstorms to happen. Tuesday, you're going to have a mostly sunny day with highs into the 72 degree temperatures. So um, it's, a good w it's a good chance to stay indoors, especially for MISCON, as it is happening this weekend as well. That's the biggest thing that's kind of happening in the news today, besides the downtown master plan update, and I'll talk more about that later on in the show. But we are talking about some state news because the federal officials that they're reducing hours at three U.S.-Canadian border crossings in Montana that are open each day. They, uh, it's usually a 24-hour deal, has now looked to save money hours on station where crossing occurs less frequently. And so the ports of Scobie, Morgan, and Ophium will operate from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. year-round starting June 1st. In national news, protests against uh, alleged sexual harassment of McDonald's employees are planned for 13 cities from Los Angeles to Miami yesterday. Workers, with support from the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund and the fight for a $15 union, fled 25 sexual harassment complaints against the company, most of them at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. That's in addition to more than 25 similar complaints filed in the past three years. The workers demand Demands are simple. Workers want an effective system to foster a respectful workplace, says Eve, says Eve uh, Cavantes, an uh, attorney representing the workers. But she says after years of complaints, and the company has retaliated against many workers bringing them. In one instance, a former employee was told by a group of managers and her assailant to stop bringing up the past and that she should let it go. She was forced to attend that meeting. The claims allege everything from lewd comments to groping, to retaliation against people who uh, protest against the corporation. So that's kind of what's kind of happening in the news in and around the state of Montana and in the world. What do you think? It's real messed up, man. But yeah. It's good that, you know, that they're doing something about that. Yeah. It's, uh, I just hear more and more crazy things each day about it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's power. Yeah. Power moves. Grow. Man. Yep. All right, so uh, I have a program. Uh, there's a bunch of programs happening this weekend as well, so um, I'm going to show you an art clip. Uh, this is at the Clay Studio. It'll be ending next week. You only have one more week to check this out, and then when we come back, we're going to have Irene and Lisa talking about their events during the International Women's Theater Festival.
Hey guys, we're here with Lisa and Irene. You guys are here to talk about your events that are happening this weekend for the International Women's uh, Theater Festival. And it's gonna be happening at the Elks Lodge uh, tonight, Saturday night, and of course the wrap up is gonna happen at the Roxy at 7 p.m. All 7 p.m., all happening, Missoula, bad weather, good chance to get indoors and see some comedy, see some uh, anecdotal humor type stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're gonna start with Lisa is that you're gonna be talking about uh, the uh, codependent Lesbian Alien Seeks Sane. Right, 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 yeah. Um, there, we're going to screen, it's a feature length film uh, that, that I have a, a lead role in called Codependent Lesbian Space Alien Seeks Sane. Uh, and it's a comedy and it's a, it's a send up to 1950s UFO movies and alien movies and, 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 and a send up to like Ed Wood style movies. Um, it's a film that premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, and so yeah, we'll be screening it tonight. And then following that, we'll be screening The Changeover uh, by Miranda Harcourt, who's also a person who's a participant in this festival. Oh, that's great. Uh, so it's going to be, it's kind of like a meet and greet with the filmmaker, right? Yeah, she'll actually, I'll be there, right, of course, and yeah. Miranda will come in on Skype afterwards to talk to folks. And when was this movie made? The, the Codependent? Yes. Movie. So it was when? Yes. It was made 2011, mm -hmm. shot in New York City. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been showing it ever since, you know, talking about it, kind of like touring with this movie as well. So it played, it played at festivals um, for two years. It played the festival circuit for two years, and then now it's available on streaming. Oh, cool. Yeah, streaming like Amazon and, and other VOD platforms, and it's also available in, v, in DVD. Yep, and what, are, what have been some of the receptions to this movie? Oh, I mean, um, so so it's a comedy, um, and so we got like a great review from IndieWire, from The Hollywood Reporter, um, which people could look up online if you right. wanted to see that. You can also look on um, IMBD to find links to reviews and stuff, but yeah, we've had a lot of really great oh, reviews. That's awesome. How's it playing yeah. in space? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think good. Send I think it, good. You know, send the old uh, television uh, uh, radio signals out there, you know, uh, <laughs> And maybe aliens will pick it up someday. Yeah, yeah. that's... They'll that's be like, a... I can relate to that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> There's always something that people can relate to in yeah. any of these things. And uh, you also have a, a book reading. You're a poet, you're an author, screenplay, all sorts of things. <laughs> so this is uh, Irene O'Garden. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I always have to refer to my notes because oh, it's... all right. Okay. Okay. Risking right. the Rapids. Yes. Risking the Rapids, it, it's, and the subtitle is How My Wilderness Journey Healed My Childhood. And it's it, it, part of the uh, memoir takes place in the Bob Marshall Wilderness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a couple years ago, uh, I decided to go out in the backcountry with my brother Jim, who goes out every year. And he said, come on out, uh, we'll do a float trip. It'll be nice, it'll be easy, uh, I'll be with my sister. Uh, Bob Marshall is <laughs> not easy. Like, well, he's like, <laughs> oh, we'll just, we, I'll teach you how to fly fish. And I'm thinking like, oh, a river runs through it. We've got to do this. All right. And it was also in commemoration of a, a brother of ours who had died, and unexpectedly. And this guy was a troublesome guy. So uh, we sort of decided to, to reach some closure about the family on that journey. And so the book also covers my upbringing in the uh, middle of the country, in the middle of the last century, in the middle of seven children, and I had a celebrity dad, and my mom was a kind of icy, socially uh, oriented person, not so much for the kids, and there were rivers <laughs> of martinis, and all kinds of stuff. So, so that's what that book is about, and uh, I'll be reading from that. And then on Sunday night, uh, we are having a, a staged reading of a play of mine that was done off-Broadway, and it's called Women on Fire, and it is 12 monologues, uh, uh, various women, um, each of them is on fire about something, and it's all different. Somebody's oh. on fire about shopping, somebody's on fire nice. about grandchildren, somebody's on fire. So it's a, it's it, a wide it's, range. It's very much like, what's the deal with this and then the other person's like wait a minute but what's the deal with that yeah 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 awesome and also you have your second performance <clears throat> yeah on, on saturday night we'll be doing so lisa berger who's my writing partner and acting partner will be doing a reprisal of a sketch comedy titled rita and inez the true queens of femininity which actually premiered here in missoula at the top hat like 20 
25, well, maybe almost 30 years ago. <laughs> but we're, we're both back in bed to do a repri reprisal of that sketch comedy, which is, I guess I would describe as like some right on raunch. <laughs> nice. So your first event's happening tonight. Tonight. Um, and that's at the Elks at 7 p.m. It's going to be kind of a, a Q&A after, like it's going to be like a fun Q&A comedian kind of sketch after everyone watches your movie. Uh, once again, that movie is called Codependent Lesbian Aliens Seek Same. Yeah. And also, you'll be uh, uh, doing um, your Risking the Rapids on tonight or Saturday night, so Saturday. 7 p.m. at the Elks. So you two will be together on Saturday. Correct. So yes. you're by yourself on Friday night at 7 p.m. Correct. with another group that's presenting. And then on Saturday, you guys join forces to uh, present together. And also, we, Teresa Logan, a stand-up comedian, yeah. will be doing a set. That evening oh, on Saturday night as also well. Also very funny. Yep. Yeah, so uh, awesome. from what from my what I heard from Maura on Wednesday's interview, we have more times and a lot of things happening this weekend as well. Is that you guys talked about uh, many things uh, from you have two events happening tonight at the Elks, then you got three events, three different events happening Saturday night at seven, and then Sunday is going to be kind of like the wrap up show with a, lo a little bit of everything. Absolutely, and the tickets are really reasonable. They're ten dollars. For, for any of the events, uh, because we really just want people to come in and see what we've been doing and, uh, and, and hopefully uh, encourage other people to be creating. Yeah, you know? that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You gotta go around, show people uh, a, a new perspective on how you present yourselves and how, how people see it and like, you know, something that you, know, you, wouldn't see, you wouldn't normally see in Missoula. Like, Missoula's kind of become a hub for a lot of people coming through showing a lot of their talents. Yeah, yeah sure. as well they should. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much once again. It's going to be at the Alex Lodge. This is the International Women's uh, Theater Festival, and it's happening 7 p.m. every single night starting tonight, and it will be wrapping up at the Roxy at, on Sunday. But again, Friday, Saturday night, Alex Lodge. You can't miss it. All right, guys, do you have anything else you want to say? Free parking? Is there free parking in the, so in the evenings? Yes, free parking after, free five, parking. after free parking. 5 p.m. You don't have to worry about meters. That's just the, that's just the code of Missoula. It's... it's you know, like the meter monitors, their work hours are from 9 to 5, so remember that. Even sometimes even after 4.30, because, you know, I've worked downtown for a little while. It's like, <laughs> I know their route. <laughs> <laughs> Again, um, I'm going to put up the, your guys' websites. Uh, that's lisa-haas.com and orinogarden, no apostrophe, dot com, orinogarden.com. And I'll put them on the uh, video links as well, so you guys can check out more information about them. So thank you guys very much. Thank you. And a good show. Thanks Thank a lot. And while this increasing level of urgency when it comes to cyber threats is, is helpful to um, generate more interest um, in the topic and to um, get a, you know, the public more interested in um, uh, what is actually possible uh, through in cyberspace, so not only that it's great to get the freedoms of communicating with everybody around the world and uh, reading and um, ordering different um, material, it's also um, an area that uh, we can um, be threatened by and we have to prepare for. Um, hygiene and going to sc and then going to school and so it's been a huge success and I'm very excited about it. I mean we've done a lot of the hardest program in country, the garbage program was the hardest program we've ever done because again that whole concept of getting people to go from throwing their garbage down here to in a in a pin in a bin was very, very challenging and still is challenging. I mean, it's, it's going on. But Son sectores los que están eh, eh, proliferados por la, por la delincuencia, que tienen delincuencia, y los sectores que, que hay otros sectores que no, pero obvio eso necesita recurso económico para poder vivir tú en un sector donde no te vayan a estar molestando o no te van a estar haciendo daño. He's also saying that in the 70s and 80s, gangs used to be very different. Uh, before then, the worst thing that could happen to you if you were part of the gang is that uh, you would get into like a small physical argument with another gang, but that would be it. Nowadays, there's way bigger repercussions to it. Because of that, a lot of people just like him seek to better themselves through education and other means, basketball for example and they try to reach out to every opportunity and take advantage of it in order to get out of those places. Once they go up, who cares where they come down? That's not my problem, says Werner Von Braun. As, that was about right. The comedian, Mort Saul, 
was referred to a movie about Von Braun's life. It was a popular movie. It was called Aim for the Stars. Uh, Mort Saul suggested maybe there should be a subtitle, but sometimes I hit London. <laughs> Von Braun brought with him over 100 scientists and in addition led the Americans to several V2s, complete V2s, and gave them documents. Stalin was absolutely furious. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to re review movies based on absolutely nothing. It's time for pre-critic. Kicking off your pre-critic day is what if Superman was evil? And that's the movie. That's that's basically the movie. I don't know why I have to explain it anymore, but it's called Bad Man. Bad person, evil man thing, cool. whatever. Got to fix your camera too. Oh, I can do that if you want. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, it seems like an interesting concept, but uh, the cartoons already did it. Though, oh yeah, they, the comics know, did it. Everyone's done comics it. Comics always do that, like what if story thing. Yeah, this is basically just a movie of that, except it's not like officially DC. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, that movie where it's just like monster trucks, but there's monsters in the trucks. Where it's just like, will they make? Will they take it a little what too if? literally? Yeah, what if scenarios? All right, up next we got Aladdin. Oh no. Uh, or as I like to call it, never had a friend. <laughs> never had a friend. <laughs> or never had friends. Me Anyways, ne me never had friends. Well, you know, it's uh, you know, I'm just thinking that this is a lazy interpretation of the beloved property. It's so lazy. Honestly, uh, if you guys saw the uh, video about like Prince Ali, can't you see Ali Bob? That's uh, as much enthusiasm they actually put into that movie. But I heard in a couple reviews that it's actually not so bad. But you never know. Live action Lion King is coming out soon, and everyone's calling it live action Lion King, and it really bothers people. But it's. That's kind of like the the, the the intention, so. I've got I've got way too many opinions about Aladdin, man. I just watched the original yesterday and just, like, get caught up, you know. And this movie is, like, 30 minutes longer than the animations. Like, what do they put in there? They put in there a whole, uh, whole other song. It's just going to be, I think it's just slower. It's just slower than the yeah. film. And there's not nearly as much action. Like, you know, they do the whole parkour thing, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's hip, it's fly, but um, <laughs> I'm just not buying Will Smith's uh, singing is a thing. That Prince Ali clip just made me yeah. bored, bored and sad. Yeah. Okay, so up next we got another movie that's coming out. Hey, you know how, like, uh, Superbad has, like, a raunchy comedy with teenagers? This one is the same thing, but with girls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, great. Neat. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with that, just, say, just so you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so basically, this is a director, di directorial debut of Olivia Wilde. Remember that the girl, the, 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 she played the woman in um, Tron? The female oh, in Tron. Oh, okay. She's, she's directing this book star, smart movie about these two girls who are basically valedictorians okay. of their school. And then it's just like, all right, you guys are valedictorians. That's solid. You guys are going get to get into good colleges. Like, so what are we going to do for the next two weeks? They're going to go crazy and have all the fun that they missed out on through high school. Uh, that's interesting. I, uh, I've never seen her direct yet. So that will be... Yep. If you ever get a chance to see her in a comedy, uh, Butter is a really good comedy. It's it's the one with Hugh Jackman. Uh, you got um, uh, Rob Corddry's in it too. A lot of good funny people in it. And the whole concept of the movie is that they make um, butter sculptures, and the movie's called Butter. And th she makes a uh, 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 she's a character in that movie, and she does a good job in the movie. So see that movie instead of this movie, Book Smart. All right, <laughs> and that pretty much is it, does it for uh, pre critic. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, Lime comes out today, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what, that's what, all those movies come out today. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why I do pre-critic. Oh, which one should I go see? I'm going to go see Brightburn. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are you going to go see? I'm going to go see Aladdin and just, like, uh, be that guy in the theater, you know? It's like, <laughs> 
Yeah, it was great when they did it in uh, Aladdin. Uh, <laughs> you should probably even get uh, Austin to go with you because he's, he's terrible. He's a big heckler in movies. Man. He's really bad. I remember when I don't I, know if I can keep up with him. Well, yeah, but I, I remember uh, watching Slender Man with him and Neil, and we were just basically, basically cracking jokes. And somebody like had the gall of yelling. It's like, will you guys be quiet? I'm just like thinking to myself, like, you really want to watch Slender Man, the movie? Yeah. <laughs> the one that was converted from rated R to PG-13 because they didn't want to show, I guess, somebody stabbing their eye with a, a syringe? Gross. But also, yeah... Um, I mean, it doesn't help that, like, when, when I talk to Austin, he always uh, talks at, like, uh, what, not not room level, but, like, uh, Is like it loud? concert hall level. Yeah. Uh, which, which isn't a bad thing. Well, you know, like, at Austin. In a movie theater. You know? <laughs> and Austin does have to be the funniest person in the room. Yeah. yeah. Which He's got good projection. He has good projection. I have good projection, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can, uh, I can uh, cut through, project. I can cut through the noise. <laughs> Pretty easily. Yeah. I'm a smooth bear tone. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for those movies. I have the final, 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 I swear, uh, flagship Friday video, uh, New Girl Part 2. And be aware, viewer discretion is advised because some th- there's sub- subject matter of bullying. So here's this. You're always talking. Yes, I am always talking. But there's no reason for me to stop. You always listen. There you always is a reason. Your eyes. Lonnie, can you tell Andy that I should not shut up? I can talk if I want to. Uh, Who are you texting? Uh, just texting to, uh, Gabby. Gabby, yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought her name is Abby. No, her name's Gabby. Gabby with a G. But we're still your best friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys, you're not going to ignore us, are you? No. I don't like it. What? Well, because I feel like it's just, it should be just the three of us. Well, it can be the three of us, but Gabby can hang out with us sometimes too. Yeah. Are you going to ignore us at all? No. What about last night? Last night, I was kind of getting annoyed, but I just went home. Okay. What are you saying to Gabby? I'm just texting her. I know, but what are you saying? We're just having a conversation. Like? Just talking about lunch. Lunch? What was her lunch again today? Uh, chicken noodle soup. What did you think it was, Andy? I think it was uh, sandwiches. No, it was definitely chicken noodle soup. No, it was definitely sub sandwiches. No, it was definitely chicken noodle soup. I, I know you were fact. talking about my cheese. Oh, uh, hi, Abby. Gabby. Gabby, right. <laughs> Silly meme. Which? Probably get to class. Yeah. Let's go, Lonnie. I actually have a class with Gabby. Oh. Actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll see uh, you guys later. See ya, Lonnie. Bye, 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 Abby. Talk at lunch. Yeah. Bye. Yep. Well, let's go. You know your friend Millie? Yeah. yeah. What about her? Uh, she she rem- she reminds me of somebody. What crew? Someone at my old school. Oh. She wasn't very nice, but uh, Millie's nice. She just gets carried away sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're my like only friend I really have. Well, you have Andy and Millie. I don't think they like me. Sure they do. No. You're my only really friend. Thank you. Here. Can I have a hug? Sure. And I'm sorry. For what? For, like, all the stuff that that I told you. I'm sure it's weird, but it's fine. Abby, the girl that Lonnie totally ditched us for last night. You mean Gabby? Gabby. Gabby, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, did you pick up on how I said Lonnie ditched us for her? I mean... She's taking Lonnie from us, Andy. 
She's not taking Lonnie from us. Well, how do you explain the fact that Lonnie hasn't been hanging out with us forever? She totally ditched us when we went to my house last night. Maybe it's time for some changes. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I say it isn't. Come on, Andy. Gabby, I feel like she's trying to steal Lonnie away from us. I mean, she's... I don't know. It's a feeling that I get from her. You know how every new girl gets swooped up? Yes. Well, now Gabby's getting swooped up with us. It should... Mm, it shouldn't be that way. I know Lonnie. She's not normally like this. I don't like that Gabby girl, for one. Sometimes time for change. Lonnie makes friends with pretty much every new kid. Gabby's no different. Gabby isn't any different to you, but Maybe to it's me, time for some changes. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I say it isn't. Come on, Andy. I know Lonnie. She's not normally like this. Gabby is weird. There's just nothing to say more about that. And I don't understand why you don't think that. If you stop talking, what do you want me to do? Hey, Lonnie. So this is what I just found out. I'm cheating on Brandon with Jimmy. Oh, I didn't hear that. Mm. And also, Jimmy is cheating on me with Stephanie. Oh, really? Yeah. And then Stephanie found out, and then um, he broke up with Jimmy, and now I have to choose between Brandon and Jimmy. Probably just do eating meeting my eating meeting my girl at lunch. Oh, and, um, what, what what's the deal with Gabby? I don't know. She's good. You hang out a lot. I'm sure you know a little bit more. Well, yeah, but... Um... Is she nice? Yeah. I heard she doesn't really talk that much. I mean, sometimes. I know you know more about her. Come on, tell me. Well, if I tell you, then you might tell everyone. No, I won't. I'll keep this one a secret. Well, you said that last time. I did? Well, this time I promise. So I just wanted to tell you something since you're new and all. So you don't really know how this school works, but I just wanted to let you know that people kind of separate off into groups, you know? And Lonnie, Andy, and I, that's our group. Yeah. We're, we're tries. Yeah, tries with an I at the end. So I guess I just wanted to tell you that Lonnie treats all of the new girls this way. They eventually just find their way off and I'm sure it'll be the same with you you're very capable of that I'm sure and well I guess just don't think you're anything special you're friends with Lonnie until you find new friends and that'll happen quickly with there's your personality plenty of, and there's plenty of other girls here and you have a great personality yeah plenty of fish in the sea so just wanted to let you know don't worry I'll I'll get all your lives yeah bye that one? Well? Question mark? Yeah, it did. Now, will you shut up? So, isn't she like really annoying? Yeah. Um, she puts like everything out, right? Yeah, she does. She like always talks about her problems. Yeah, she never really lets me say what I need. Why don't you ever just tell her to go away? Because I don't want to be mean about it. She's like really clingy, right? Yeah. I could not handle that. Sometimes I wish she would just go away. Yeah. Millie's a really good friend, though, but... Yeah, I can see why Millie's, like, you know, like that. But I get why she's a good friend, so... Yeah. Hi. What's going on? You didn't hear? About what? Gabby killed herself.
Well, that was a somber end to the flagship Friday season. But yeah, uh, that, those kids worked really hard on those movies. Good framing shots, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, they uh, they did their own, uh, ran their own audio, ran their own camera. I was just there to make sure that they were on task, but they stayed on task really well. And, uh, you know, it's uh, viewer discretion as advised because, you know, the, the suicide at the end. Yeah, dark, dark. It got dark, but I think, uh, like I told him, it's like we wanted something that really just kind of like had people leave with something that of, of a feeling, you know? Yeah. Yep. And the suddenness of a suicide is always definitely impactful in many different things that, that many can people can buy, like relate to but it's it's definitely a, a it's a story but it's it's all pretend but i just wanted to make that disclaimer as well just so you guys know so yeah yeah it was a good video though. yeah it looked really good uh we utilized the drone that we have here at mcat not for checkout <laughs> yeah. uh but we do uh, work with people if they really want to get some really cool shots. Um, I'm I'm pretty much the top tier uh, uh, drone guy. Neil's pretty much second. And I haven't uh, used it at all. Yeah, exactly. So you're tier three. <laughs> yeah. <I guess. laughs> Nobody else has really has any experience with it as well. Um, what was I going to do again? I totally forgot. Words, right? People. Anyways. Things. <laughs> Things and stuff. Nice. Um, oh, I did want to mention that uh, MCAT is now streamlining our sign up uh, user application form as well. So if you want to check out any equipment that involve that has to do with uh, Rebel T3Is, we have uh, Canon RF50s, really nice cameras, good for checking out and good for getting and making your own creative projects from movies um, to uh, documentaries to just uh, generally um, catching some um, videos of some nature and stuff. So go to MCAT.org. And you can find out more information about this. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, this is where you can require all new users of our station to fill out a form to be a part of the MCAT community. And with the intention of making a program that will air on our channel, 189, off of Charter Spectrum. Which is now Spectrum. It's not Charter Spectrum. It's just straight up Spectrum. Yeah, they made the full, full changing name. Yeah, they, uh, they, uh, they went full Spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, I totally. Don't, I don't know why. Spectrum is a, it's a fancy word. It's like saying um, uh, low calorie, <laughs> um, extreme, fuel efficient, Radical. green, energy, you know, you know, buzzwords, all that kind of stuff. Spectrum is pretty much like the, one of the biggest words that are happening in the last four years. And there'll be another word coming up later. So they'll change the name again. Who knows? Okay, so anyways, let's talk about some city council. If you are interested in learning more about your uh, city of Missoula, you can go to on the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening within the city. This time, it's talking about how we're going to look out at the uh, downtown uh, city, about how we're going to grow and how we're going to change some things as well. So we have uh, Jason King. Um, he is uh, basically uh, with months. He worked with uh, months of community engagement, planning, writing, and editing. Dover Cole and Partners uh, with Jason King uh, returned uh, May 21st to 23rd to present a draft of the downtown master plan, plan to the community. And I'm just going to talk, uh, kind of go uh, skim over, just kind of go over some of the things they're going to be talking about. And here's uh, the project's timeline. We expect to be coming before you again in the fall for a formal approval process. Um, and uh, as mentioned, my name is Jason King from Dover Cola Partners, and I get to be the project director for a very talented multidisciplinary team. We've got Victor Dover, uh, founder of Dover Cola Partners, co-founder with Joe Cole. Uh, we've got Rob Piotowski, uh, my right-hand man, project manager on this project. Um, we've got representatives from the partnership here. We've had on this team local experts like uh, Spider at Six Pony Hitch and Mark at Territorial Landworks and experts from around the country. Economy. Yep, so they have all sorts of experts coming in, working on this project. That's just giving you a basic background of what they want to do. Um, September is the date in which the city does plan to put this motion in place once they get feedback from the community. It was kind of like a community-driven thing in the past. Then they put the data and information to this firm, which they presented on Wednesday night at the Wilma at 5.30 to talk a little bit more about this. And one of the major things they did talk about is how they wanted to change uh, wide parking, you know, like the large parking lots and how they want to improve. It's like that's prime real estate in the downtown area and they want to get rid of wide parking areas to build more of a contemptual uh, parking garage. So I'll have them look, explain a little bit more about the, kind of what they want to do. And here's an air, a nice aerial shot of, well, this is pretty much the, uh, the uh, parking lot that is here near MCAT. So let's check it out. And this is what they want to do with it. 
Land is too valuable now for surface lots. Surface lots are, uh, are not parking enough in order to do the job. So what we've been looking at are places where we could actually fit large structured parking garages that we could line. This is one potential opportunity area. There are other identified. This is great because it's so close to the engine and the depot and, uh, and the park. What's important is that if something does appear there, is that it not look like a parking garage. That uh, there is room in that case to line it. Something goes in front of it. So it looks like stores and cafes and signs that get you to parking. Um, but it still has the high quality urbanism you might find on Higgins. Yep. And that, I mean, like, that's one of the goals. And I understand that, you know, like more storefronts, more building space, but on the inside, there's a parking garage. And the really cool thing that they, uh, that they have, even in, especially in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is they have an underground parking garage. Based, if you go into the, basically their town square, they have uh, staircases that go underground. And that's to a, a very large parking garage structure that they have underground Albuquerque, New Mexico. But uh, we're not talking about Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're talking about uh, parking garages that we're going to have in Missoula. So uh, needless to say that there's a lot of efforts in place for downtown areas and the city is trying to take advantage of their growing tax revenue base as a way to invest in the downtown areas for more tourism and get more outside money coming in. Uh, one suggestion uh, that these folks did uh, suggest was streetcars. They say that there's been a, 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 a sudden surge of interest and a reliability with clean electric energy uh, and there's been a big revival in a lot of communities and cities in the last 25 years. So here's Jason King once again talks about communities prefer uh, streetcars over a bus system. In your study, um, uh, it talks about how in this one case, the streetcar had 500 more, 500% um, more use than the bus. And it's probably for the reasons you're discussing. Yeah, my six-year-old wants to ride on the streetcar, and he's not so excited about the bus. And there's a lot of reasons for why that is. Um, uh, but the streetcars in New Orleans are perennial and people are visiting it all the time in order to do it. The new streetcar system that they unrolled uh, in El Paso, they celebrate Cinco de Mayo on the streetcar. You have birthdays on the streetcar. It's like a traveling party museum um, that people get excited about in ways they haven't about other modes of transportation. You know, and of course, you know, like the city, um, one of the biggest things is like, we got snow, right? You know, like, uh, like, are we going to basically try to like push the snow on the streetcars? Put a, basically a giant, um, um, what's that called? A plow onto the streetcars themselves because they're not powerful enough to push snow because they're electric. A lot of electric vehicles, and I think honestly, I think uh, I personally think has nothing to do with what the city thinks is that we should exchange the uh, gas buses for electric buses. That will help solve the electric energy kind of consumption area. Streetcars, it's a huge undertaking. Um, it's expensive. Even holding a streetcar can cost up into the millions of dollars in maintenance and constant deals. So it's a, it's a big process, and it would be a whole new uh, thing that they would put into it. I don't know. I think it's important to uh, progression in the city because, like, I know I mentioned Seattle a lot, but, like, Seattle has a really good streetcar system. And the uh, Portland has their light rail. They have a really great yeah. light rail system that goes all around Portland area. It's, it's beautiful. I wrote it once. Yeah, both places have those. And I think, like, it's good to take a cue from that because it works, you know. Um, they've got trolleys, tracks. They've got rail buses. Um, and it all just works really well. Yep. And uh, one of the things that they really want to do is uh, have more boulevards, more shade, more trees planted in the downtown area to help improve shade and have more of a, a nice look aesthetic to it so you can be fairly protected by uh, the UV radiation <laughs> and the sun. Um, of course, uh, so far at the proposed meeting, if you read in the Missouri article in terms of people, how they feel, felt about everything from this presentation, 10% of the Missouri population were, uh, it's usually about 7 to 10% were uh, against like pretty much a lot of different things within the downtown Missoula area. And we're not talking about residency or affordable housing because that's what they did in the next committee of the whole meeting, which I'll talk about as well. But since we are talking about trees, I'm going to jump on the tree train, um, tree train, or tree, tree, yeah, tree train. And uh, we're talking about some parks and cons uh, conservation. On April 20th, 2015, the Missoula City adopted the Missoula 
urban forest management plan to help deal with a lot of the dying trees. This is a four-year update discussion the, pr uh, the progress and implementing the uh, strategies listed in the management plan. And of course, just a quick thing, you can always sign up for tree removal through the urban forestry's uh, link website on the city's website. Um, if you put money in and you put money into the urban forestry, you get higher on the list. But it's just pruning and dealing with a lot of the trees that are technically uh, public right away because urban forestry was developed to help manage a lot of the trees that are dying in Missoula and also caretaking a lot of the trees. Um, Chris Boza, uh, he is with the urban forestry. He talks about how much all these trees in Missoula are actually worth because apparently the trees that are uh, public right away is have a value currently have a uh, little over uh, 29,000, actually almost uh, 30,000 trees in the inventory which have a total appraised value of just over $102 million. So it's a uh, fairly significant uh, community asset. And All right, so uh, hey Josh, uh, I wrote you into this uh, segment. How much is the most expensive tree worth in the city of Missoula. Dude, I don't know. I've I've just been coming up with other names for the tree train. Right. The branch bus, <laughs> the arbor airplane. What, what if was I the question? <laughs> what if I told you that there is a tree in the city of Missoula, a single tree that is worth sixty seven thousand dollars. Oh. A single tree is worth sixty seven thousand dollars. Which one? The big one? It's a big one. <laughs> it's a uh, apparently it's a tree that's off of Tree Tremont and Edith Street near that church in that area. It is a sugar maple tree and it's 28 inches in diameter, and and that's a lot of sugar. Wow. And all the trees collectively in the city of Missoula have a 102 million dollar value. Wow. So it's it's a lot of trees, and you know like it's interesting to put actually a number and a value on these trees. Yeah, like, you never think about it. Dude, we should start selling uh, buy low, sell high, you know? Yeah. Just, like, plant some more trees. If they're worth so much money, like, that's that's infinite money, right? And uh, speaking trees. of trees, uh, the, um, the wastewater treatment plant utilizes uh, thousands upon thousands of trees, and they're the poplar hybrid trees that are uh, right next to the uh, the new Walmart. If you're from Missoula, you, you know where the new Walmart is. I don't know why. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But, it's yeah, like it's... That's by the wastewater treatment plants, which uh, recycles gallons of, like, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water from the Clark Fork River every year. And it's uh, part of a tree farm. It's, like, right next to the river. It's great. Yeah. And they're going to sell those trees to Ikea once they uh, once they grow up to be 18, 20-year-old project. And it's pretty close to being done. Nice. I think it's at its halfway point. Ikea, man. I can right? buy a bookshelf with those trees. So, like, they basically rented... Uh, the land they lease the land from the landowner so they don't have to farm it's basically a tree farm it's great so that's just a little bit about trees and urban forestry here's some success stories from Chris Boza as well those is that city trees are gaining project standing and uh, in the past uh, trees have been seen as simply a nice amenity an aesthetic thing that uh, looked nice around the community. But in reality, what we've been able to articulate, and we're now seeing that in fruition, is that city trees are a benefit and they provide a, uh, a uh, uh, various functions and economic benefits to the community. All right, so that was Chris Boza. And economic benefits, like you know, $102 million value, doesn't necessarily mean that it, it doesn't have an indirect impact to tourism. You know, people are coming here and like, oh, look at all these trees. It's so beautiful. That's a, that's technically an economic impact as well. Even like Arts Missoula did an impact study about how arts indirectly improves the economy in the downtown Missoula area. Say you come down here for First Friday, you look at a bunch of art, you walk around, you build up an appetite, then you go to a couple of restaurants here in the downtown area, bada bing, bada boom, arts have indirectly increased uh, the economic flow, that, uh, money going into the city of Missoula. So just think about those kind of things when you really think about the economics of the city of Missoula. So far, this is an update. You can watch the whole update in Parks and Conservation. They go really in depth with trees. It's like an hour long meeting, and I'm just giving you the, the cliff notes. Um, up next, more Committee of the Whole. Housing prices. That's a huge deal in the city of Missoula. Housing prices. How can we afford to live in places? Townhouses are getting as high as $250,000 for a townhouse. 
like a home, like Gross. back in the day. So it's ridiculous. So the show surveying in 2017 revealed a widespread uh, perception of affordable problems in the city of Missoula with 92.6 rating housing as either expensive or very expensive. But there are also strong support for public interventions, a place called home. Meeting Missoula's housing needs is a drafted proposal that will plan to work with Missoula organization of realtors who have posed many TIFs throughout the city of Missoula, which is the townhouse exemption project, um, and also the tax increment financing for uh, downtown businesses that are being built here as well, because they say that the money that are going into the TIFs should actually be going into more affordable housing. So Aaron Pian, Housing and Community Development, talks about how this will work and aim to work for affordable housing. So here's Aaron Pian. I think it will be an overall analysis of both what's happening on the market and then what's happening with units that we have more of a, a direct influence on and can monitor more closely. And I think, you know, dashboard is a is kind of a, the buzz term of late, but I think having a real-time dashboard that provides transparency for the public as well, that they can jump on our website at any point in time and see as of today, May 22nd, 2019, so many units have come on the market this year as a direct result of of the strategy that City Council has adopted and invested in. All well, right, so that was Aaron Pian. Many uh, things are being put into place, but with the overall uh, need for growth in the city of Missoula, uh, they, uh, Aaron also talked with working with many organizations and having an update process every five years based on data collected. Aaron reflects on difficulty when creating high-density living areas because a lot of times there's a lot of code problems with building large structures in Missoula. Core density uh, allows you to build 16 units and you get the permanently affordable housing density bonus that allows you to go up to 18 or 20. You still have to abide by setbacks, by height restrictions, by parking, by open space set aside. And when you factor all of those conditions in, it often is impossible for a developer to actually physically achieve the density that is allowable on that site. And so, and so one of the things that uh, she also goes into is pricing. Is like you, you don't get more affordable housing. And you get more places to live, but the affordability starts start going down. So that means the pricing goes up to help uh, combat this kind of stuff as well. Um, there's just a lot of difficulties in this because there's a lot of code and restrictions to building larger uh, uh, structures as well. Uh, of course, these are in terms of like condos, bought, uh, shared unit kind of deals, multi-dwelling units. Achieving density units are difficult since townhouses exemptions are pretty much very popular in the city of Missoula to building higher density, but fails at the amount of needs to keep up with their growth because Missoula is pretty much slated to grow 10 to about 15 to 20,000 people in the next 10 years. And that's a lot of people who are going to be moving to Missoula. And those are considered like residents, not considered individuals. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, Aaron talks about the benefits of an inclusionary development, which requires units to be at a set price, which could increase other units in the area um, as, a, as a result. Think about this. If you have affordable housing and you have a house that you bought for $180,000 and then you have all these units coming in and they're all lined up together and each of them are $180,000 so per condo unit, by retrospect, your house should be worth more and which really affects a lot of pricing along the way with this kind of high density unit. So Aaron talks a little bit more about that. Um, essentially, if you are creating uh, 10 units and mandatory inclusionary zoning tells you that two of those have to hit the market at $150,000 annually, and I'm making these numbers up to simplify, <laughs> um, and the rest of the units are going to go on the market um, at, at Two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. If if you're forced uh, on a mandatory basis to decrease the cost of those two units to meet a price point, and you don't have an incentive or a subsidy pool at the citywide level to help that developer hit those price points, the other eight units now are going to cost three hundred thousand dollars. And so yeah, so it's it's ridiculous. Like more like a lot of times, uh, like pricing really just affects one another. Um, of course, this it, it, this meeting isn't about high density housing gentrification, but the future of how Missoula grows. A place called home, colon meeting Missoula's housing needs. They're supposed to assess the housing needs in Missoula. They're going to be uh, having this uh, talked about a little bit more. Uh, open houses for this are starting on May 30th at the City Council Chambers from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. June 4th at Russell School from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. 
And the official public hearing for adoption of this place called home is June 24th at 7 p.m. at the City Council Chambers, in which I'll be talking about it because by then I'll probably be back from my vacation as well. So we have about nine minutes left in the show. I want to uh, throw it to a drone video for you guys. And here's some beautiful drone shots that I got of the MCPS school, courtesy of MCPS um, and us working together to uh, make some amazing videos about all the new buildings that are being built from the $158 million bond to, uh, that you voted for. So here is a nice little retrospect of all the buildings that have been built on the elementary school level and a couple high school levels. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we got some events we're gonna be talking about, and then hope I'm gonna try to breeze through the events. So this, this is not too many new events happening here, because this weekend is MissCon and also the International Women's uh, No Women's International <laughs> Theater Festival this weekend as well. There's a lot going on. Friday, Tiny Tales and Story Time at Museo Public Library starting at 10:30 a.m. this morning. Yarns and Watercolor, Noonish, Cribbage and Bridge, Noonish at Museo Senior Center. Uh, Teen Writers Group at Museo Public Library at 3:30 in the afternoon. Uh, this one's really cool because this next event is Green Buildings Tour, and it's the 2019 uh, Historic Preservation Month presents the Missoula County Courthouse Proves Historic Preservation and Leadership in Energy Environmental Design Can Work Together. The courthouse renovation grew from a court a county space needs anal an, uh, analysis that consolidated county departments while updating the historic building to meet long-term facility needs, public safety, and accessibility for all those ADA compliant and all that stuff. So they're doing a green tour and to show people uh, that the LEED Silver Awarded Courthouse and discover how historic preservation and energy conservation go hand in hand. LGBTQ movie night, how I felt when I saw that girl. This is the very first Bollywood movie featuring two lesbian couples and it's going to be playing at the uh, Western Montana LGBT Community Center. It's right across from Pita Pit in that building, um, second floor. You can't miss it. They're going to have a movie night. Um, Missoula History Club, Thomas Jefferson and African Americans, where they talk about his uh, illegitimate children, about freeing his, his slaves before he died. But at the same time, he died broke, so he was una unable to free a lot of the slaves, including his own children. So they talk about that at the Missoula Public Library tonight at 7 p.m. Union Hall Ball Room, um, Steampunk Carnival. You like steampunk? They're having a carnival tonight at 8 p.m. You can check it out. Saturday, Farmer's Market, all the Farmer's Market are happening. Uh, a couple more minutes left in the show, but Farmer's Market, as always. St. Regis, uh, 43rd Annual Memorial Day Flea Market, 8 a.m. at Community Park. There's the EMS Fair at Southgate Mall, and this is all about EMTs learning about safety, 
uh, medical providers, police, fire, and search and rescue, and many more will be available for safety advice and training. Uh, Saturday open hours at the Moon Round of Homestead again, 8, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Learn about Missoula's original homestead. Altered book workshop. Missoula Public Library is doing a uh, discarded book as a second chance at life. Um, from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. And then Nerf on Turf, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. And of course, this Saturday, we do not have Saturday drop-ins. So no Saturday drop-ins. We're done for the season. But you guys can always sign up online at amcat.org for our summer camps happening late June and pretty much all of July. You can check them out by going to mcat.org. All right, Hallmark or Bullmark? We just have just enough time for this Hallmark or Bullmark before wrapping up the show. Okay. We have about three minutes left in the show. Okay. Um, you ready? Yeah. When Mikey Evertree is confronted by his girlfriend to get married, he must decide if she is really the one, but unfortunately, she breaks things off before he gets the chance to answer. Being single for the first time in five years, Mikey must navigate love and self as he hires the beautiful Chelsea to help win back the one that got away, but as sparks fly, maybe the one getting away is right in front of him. And the movie's called Love Getting Away. Hallmark. That's gotta be Hallmark. Are you sure? Yeah. Please. Well, son... You're wrong. I completely uh, made that up. Yeah, this is such a confusing game. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be more versed in the Hallmark original movies. All right, moving on. <laughs> Sarah Humphrey is a trust fund kid whose father dies and in his will specifies that she must go to the old family farm to, to work for her inheritance. Larry Oldsman and his handsome son Clark must not only work Sarah, but convince her to keep the farm that employs so many hardworking families in the community. Will this spoiled socialite be able to exchange her high heels for some work boots? And it's called Steel Toed Stilettos. Hallmark or Bullmark? Well, that sounds supremely stupid. And <laughs> I'll say that that's Hallmark. Because it, it's... It sounds really dumb. It's, yeah, because it sounds so stupid. Well, I'm offended because I made that up completely. Man. Double bullmark the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dumb. Okay. I know. <laughs> you, you, you like The more you play, the more you get it. Because I used to get Noelle all the time until she started noticing subtle subtleties in the thing. Okay. So that's when I started rewriting Hallmark original movies. Because even their synopsis are terrible. All right, guys. We have about a minute left in the show. Thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and let's kick, throw it to Josh where you can play some beautiful tones right out of the show. So right. take it away, Josh.